welcome, and um, good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Let's uh, go ahead and serve the Lord, and with Kathy, and you guys can thank you. Please stand, everybody. We're using the Burgundy Book for a lot of the hymns today.
Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to Worship at Peace. You may be seated. We are singing about light today. It's Epiphany, the season of light, season of mission, the season of revealing. So Epiphany is a word that means a revealing, a manifestation. And it's a time in which our eyes are open for God to be revealed to us in sometimes surprising ways where we end up saying, aha, that was God. Um, God is trying to tell me something, show me something. And so I encourage you to keep your eyes open for epiphanies in this season. Today is the Sunday of the baptism of our Lord. We'll be looking at some of the epiphanies in this story. It is also the Sunday in which we install and bless the new church council for Peace Lutheran Church for this year, 2023. And we do a church epiphany blessing that will happen during the children's message today. So lots happening today. It's good to worship together in person. It is good to have folks connecting online today through the miracle of technology. If you are here today in person, we are wearing masks unless you're up front leading out of concern for the most vulnerable among us uh, in this time, uh, as COVID and flu and RSVP are still uh, prevalent. Um, for other church activities, like afterwards or between the services, masks are recommended, but not required. So we'll have some refreshments after the service and feel free to share fellowship and refreshments then. Um, for children, Actually, before I move on to that, we're going to keep the airflow going, so know that that's going to be happening, and then we will uh, also encourage everybody to get a flu shot, everybody who hasn't gotten their COVID booster. I mean, this is about protection. This is about having as much protection as you can for your own health and the health of the people around you. Children, uh, we have Pupal activity bags there in the back now, those blue bags, you can pick them up can do uh, some coloring with sheets that connect in with, uh, yeah, here we have, do we have them to, um, yeah, there, Ben's got some, and uh, the Pedrick kids have them here, so um, this is good to help kids connect during worship time, there's a cry room to use in the back, Miss Rebecca is uh, in the basement uh, nursery uh, to have smaller children who, um, that for whom that will be better for them. And we do have a children's message today and a children's worship time where kids can go uh, with the children's ministry leader to that time and then return later in the service uh, to share in communion with everybody. So that's happening. As we begin worship today and at the beginning of the year, we acknowledge that these are the traditional homelands of the Puyallup people of the Coast Salish Nation, a living people who have stewarded this land and continue to steward the land into the future. We lift up the vision that God has given us. God's given this, this vision, and it has helped us organize our ministries as we move into the future, and it will continue into 2023 to be a diverse community of faith in the hilltop where all are welcome, a community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just. We're living into that vision. We're not there yet. It's a vision of God's peace. God is a God of peace. God calls us to be peacemakers. So a chance for us now in worship to share God's peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Please take time now. Share God's peace with the folks around you.
everybody can make it back to their seats for um, in time of prayer. All right, let us bow our heads and pray. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, please open our hearts and our minds for the message today um, and um, the scriptures. Lord, help us to um, clear our minds of the noise of what we're going to be eating later and what we're going to be doing today and just open our, open our hearts and our minds. Amen. Old Testament reading today is Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 49. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and have kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you them. Here ends the reading. Amen. Please stand as you're able, and we will welcome the reading of the gospel by singing today. Gospel continues this morning in Matthew chapter 3, uh, verses 13 to 14, 17. Excuse me. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by John, so by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice came from heaven, said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Children who would like to come up for a children's message, come on up. Come on up, everybody. You're good. You're good. You're coming the right way. Keep coming. Children's message. That's this way. I know. We, sometimes we go that way. You guys, after we do this, then you'll have a chance to go for children's worship time. 
Here they come. Great. Welcome, everybody. So, guys, we are in a new season. Seasons are helpful for us because we had Advent last year. Remember that when we were lighting all the candles, getting closer to the season of Christmas when we celebrate Jesus being born. And now we're in the season, anybody paying attention? It starts with an E, the season of? This is not the season of Christmas anymore. This was a hard one. Epiphany. Can you guys repeat that? Epiphany. Epiphany. Great. Epiphany. It's a big word. It's a really cool word to learn. It means to show. To show. And we're wondering what God is showing us in this season. Sometimes we say epiphanies are aha moments. Now, okay, this is what I mean. Something happens and I go, aha, I got it. I understand, or I get it now. That was God. God was doing something. God is at work. God is teaching me something. So maybe you can be thinking about those times when suddenly you're like, ah, I get it. I learned something more about God, or that was God working. There is a special story that happens on the day of Epiphany, which was Friday. Friday was the beginning of the season. And on that day, we remember, remember those guys, the wise men in the story of Jesus being born? The Magi. They travel from far away, from way out east, and they bring their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they come to the Christ child, and they give those gifts, and they are welcome. And we think about how God has come to us in the Son, Jesus. Jesus has come into this world for everybody, including people from far away, including people from different cultures and backgrounds, like the wise men. That is pretty awesome. It's like an epiphany where we go, aha, Jesus has come into this world to show God's love to everybody. Yeah. Also, on that special day of epiphany, it's a really good time to have a blessing of the places where we're staying, like a blessing of our homes. So I'm going to give, if I remember, I have to remember, or you need to ask me for it, when you're leaving today, I'll have in my hand a stack of these, Epiphany Blessing of the Home, that you guys could use this week or maybe in the next couple weeks to bless your home. And it's a special blessing. We're going to do a blessing here because this is our church home, right? This is the place where our church family or our church community gets together all the time. And here's why it's a good reason to bless homes on Epiphany, because what we're saying is we welcome Jesus into this place. We know that Jesus is already here, but we welcome Jesus to be here, and we also welcome, just like Jesus welcomed all those people, the shepherds and the family welcomed the wise men to worship Jesus, we welcome everybody who comes into our homes into our church, right? We want to be a place of welcoming and blessing. And so let's have a prayer right now for this church, an epiphany blessing of the church. Can everybody raise at least one or two hands up? These are blessing hands. And you're thinking about our church for this whole year, and we're going to do a blessing. God, bless this church. Thank you that this is a place where we can come to learn about you, to worship you, and then be sent out to serve you. Thank you that Jesus has come to know us and to love us and to save us. We welcome Jesus in this place and in our church. And God, we pray that you help us welcome everybody who comes here with your love in Jesus. Amen. All right, thank you, everybody. You guys can go to children's worship time if you want with Miss Jaina. If you go there, you'll come back into this place in time for communion, okay? Thank you.
I, I hope and I pray that everybody had some opportunity in this holiday time for some rest and renewal. With the confirmation students, the seventh and eighth graders today, we talked about Sabbath rest. We talked about how God wants us to have rest and renewal and to grow in our relationships with loved ones. I pray that this holiday time and moving into the new year, you've experienced some kind of rest and renewal. I had an opportunity to be with um, uh, my family, visiting Lee's parents in Oakland, California. We left Christmas Day after worship. We're there for a week. It was a wonderful time. And I don't know if you've been keeping track of what's going on in the San Francisco Bay Area, but a lot of rain, storms, flooding happening there. It was going on while we were there and continues now. And so on New Year's Eve, there was a storm and there was a power outage for over four hours. Now that's, you know, power goes off and on sometimes here, but usually it's not for that many hours. So it happened in the a later afternoon and then into the evening. So what were we doing? Starting to light candles, right? Thinking about other options for the New Year's Eve meal that we're gonna share. Uh, getting a little cozier, uh, bonding with the grandparents a little bit. Yeah, so it's the season of epiphany, and it strikes me that that was an aha moment for me. Okay? I don't know. You have to stop and reflect, really, to have an aha moment, by the way. Right? We, we just keep living our lives. If you don't stop and think about things. So I had to stop. This sermon helped me stop and reflect and go, yeah. Um, well, what was God helping me realize in that moment? Epiphany is a season of light. The power outage was an aha moment for me that I often take light for granted. I also often take having a home with electricity for granted. Anybody else? Not everybody's got that. Uh, and started asking some questions. Am I taking light and darkness, the gifts of light and darkness, for granted? How do I think about light and darkness? How does that connect in with my faith in God and my relationship with God and my understanding of God and the world? What am I receiving from God through these gifts? Back on December 21st, the winter solstice, we had a longest night service here. You know, that is the day of the year with the least hours of daylight. And so on that day, we had a service where we recognized that the Christmas season can be a difficult time for folks, especially those who are experiencing grief, loss, disappointment. I've been reflecting on light and darkness this Christmas. I read this helpful book on faith. It's called Learning to Walk in the Dark by uh, Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor. And Taylor calls out that darkness in the Bible is often bad news, right? Yeah, you think about the references to darkness in the Bible. Darkness is uh, also stand, all, often standing for death and ignorance, and light is often for life and knowledge, right? Um, Jesus comes in the world so that everyone who believes may not walk in darkness, uh, but have the light of life. And then Christians often use the word darkness for, for sin and for spiritual blindness. I say this because there is a danger in thinking about darkness and light in these ways. There's this binary thinking of dividing light from dark, identifying God always with the light, right? And evil with dark uh, can get us into some dangerous uh, places. It implies negative things that we can then apply to sight-impaired people, to people with dark skin, right? P things that are not true. We, we make these applications when we have these images, sometimes out of scripture, and then we apply them and we get into some challenges. See, darkness in the Bible is not, is not 
always negative. It is also positive. Think of these stories. God took Abraham outside at night, and it must have been really dark because they were able to see a multitude of stars in the sky, and God gave Abraham a promise of this many descendants, a promise. God got through to Jacob also in the middle of the night in a dream while Jacob was outside sleeping with a promise that God is always present and God is fulfilling God's promises. Think about how the exodus from Egypt happened at night. The Red Sea crossing at night. The manna coming from heaven, right? At night. And on and on, on and on. Darkness is as sure a sign of God's presence as light is. Amen? But we don't always think about that. So especially as you're now going to hear me talking about the image of light, and light is an image for this season, let's make sure we balance that and, and think about the presence of God in, in darkness and, and the blessings of darkness. So God is present in the light and the dark. It's important for us, not just with these images, but with lots of other images in Scripture, to be open to the wealth of what the images provide. Um, also know that there can be some negative aspects to these images. Be open to see how God is at work uh, in and through images and how we apply these in our lives. One question before we jump into the Scriptures today, and that's the question that I hope you've already heard and maybe have begun to think about what epiphanies have you had recently? What, what aha moments have you had in which God was reaching you, showing up, inviting you to realize something, showing you something? We have light and darkness images in our first reading that Malcolm read. Prophet Isaiah, sharing God's word to God's people they are in exile in Babylon. They're far from their home. And here the prophet speaks God's word, and, they, and God says to them, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. So darkness sounds negative here. But at the same time, certainly the promise of God being present in that darkness is there. And the light is an image used for mission here. The image, the, the mission of the people of God in the world. There's another light reference, and maybe you missed this. I did the first time. This is God affirming that God is putting God's spirit upon a servant leader who will bring justice to the nations, who will not quench even a dimly burning wick. Okay, that's a light image, yeah? A dimly burning wick. The leader will not crush those who are vulnerable and, and struggling. That's part of the message there. A dimly burning wick reminds me of a candle. We light candles in worship. We did it on Christmas Eve in a beautiful way as we passed the light. Then a week later, my family, our family, lit candles on New Year's Eve out of necessity in the home. And each time we celebrate a baptism here at Peace, we light a candle, right? We light a candle. We're not going to have a baptism today, but maybe it's a good time to stop and reflect on baptism because we're not actually experiencing that sacrament today. Uh, let me light a candle now. I'm going to light this candle that is often our Christ candle for baptism, and we're going to reflect on the story of Jesus' baptism in Matthew's gospel. So at the first service, I had a first service I had a trouble uh, getting that going and it actually went out. Talk about the dimly burning wick, right? Um, so it's, we're, we're good uh, so far today. Um, 
So in the service of baptism at peace, each person receives a, a candle, and it's lit from the Christ candle, and there are words that are spoken from Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Baptism is a sacrament. It's a gift. Three things about a sacrament. It's a gift of God's grace, so it's an external sign of the unconditional love of God. It's commanded by Christ. Jesus tells us to do it, and it has an earthly element attached to it. For baptism, it's water. This is baptism in the Lutheran tradition, okay? That understanding of a sacrament. There are lots of images in baptism. Certainly there's water, there's oil, there's the dove for the spirit, right? There's also a shell that the church has traditionally connected with baptism. But I want to talk about the lighted candle today. And, and let's think about how the lighted candle helps us think about what baptism communicates to us. Three things. And when I say three things, I think of Pastor Plain because his message always was three things I'm going to tell you that God wants you to know today. The first, baptism is about identity. It's about who we are. It's about witness. It shows who God is. And it's about mission. It's about reaching out to others. First, it's about identity. If you look at the candle here, an unlit candle may be pretty, but candles aren't just wax and wick. If they are not lit, they are not fully living out their identity. They, are, they aren't who they were created to be, right? What they were created to be, because candles are to be lit. And they are for light and warmth and beauty. They're meant to shine. Baptism is about identity. Uh, the candle needs to receive light from an outside source. We, in baptism, receive the gifts of God from outside ourselves, the gifts of life and love, uh, God's gifts to us that enable us to shine. People wonder why Jesus was baptized. And maybe as you heard this, you're kind of like, that's a little strange, you know. John is kind of right. Why is John baptizing Jesus? Shouldn't John be, or Jesus be doing the baptizing of, of John and others? But you think he didn't really need forgiveness of sin. But his baptism has a lot to do with identity, his identity. He's standing in the Jordan River with John the Baptist. And this was funny. This week, we had the community Bible study. And just as we opened up the scripture to this part, there was an Amazon delivery person who appeared at our conference room upstairs with a delivery to give. So he had gotten in the front door looking for people, heard me talking loud, I'm sure, up there, and came up there and is delivering something. And so he walks in the door. I can tell what he's doing. I'm like, oh, thank you. And then um, I asked him, what do you know about John the Baptist? <laughs> he goes, oh, he got, he got all excited. He's like, oh, he's this wild man who is in the wilderness. And he's kind of got like, he, he's all hairy. And stuff. I'm like, okay. And what is he doing in the wilderness? I said to the guy, the delivery guy, he's like, he's baptizing people. And then <laughs> I was like, okay. And who is one person that you can remember he baptized in the wilderness? He's like, Jesus. So then we kind of did a little high five. This was all like, hybrid people on zoom are kind of like what what's going on here the people in the room are just smiling right the guy turns around with his phone takes a selfie of the room and himself and then he's like see ya <laughs> it was awesome anyway so john the baptist yes a lot of us know who john the baptist is and and here he is baptizing a lot of people and here he baptizes jesus and just after jesus is baptized standing in the waters Suddenly, the heavens break open, and God breaks in, and there's this voice that comes. It also, there's the, the dove, right? The Holy Spirit comes with the, the sign of the dove. There's this voice from heaven. This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Powerful here. Jesus being introduced in public for the first time, according to Matthew's gospel, he has got, if you think about it, he's got no great achievements that we've read about yet in Matthew. 
He hasn't done healings. He hasn't done miracles. He is just there. Yet it is God the Father, God his loving parent, who is saying to him, you are my son, affirming God's love for Jesus, and then showing that God's purposes are being worked out in this world through Jesus. This is a powerful thing, that Jesus is the son of God. That's his identity. And at the same time, he is getting baptized with everybody else, affirming that, yes, he is also identifying with our humanity. He's in the mud, in the muddy waters. The Jordan River is muddy, people. It's not a clear mountain stream. I've been there. Uh, it's like, really? I'm going to get into that to get baptized? Uh, Jesus standing with us in the muddy waters is a powerful image. He gets baptized, too. So it's about identity. At our baptism, the same promise comes to us from God. This is my beloved child in whom I'm well pleased. That means that each of us is deeply loved by God, who has created us in God's own image. And that means everything. You know, have you heard that phrase, God don't make no junk? It's true. You, you may not be feeling good about yourself or where you're headed. You may feel shame. You may feel like oh, there's just so many ugly things about me. God looks at you and through those eyes of love and forgiveness sees you as a beautiful child of God. That's who you are. That is your true identity. Live out of the core of that this year. Teach your kids that. Let's, let's help everybody to know God is our loving parent. We are God's children. And what that allows us to think about is this. If God asks, or if somebody asks you who you are and you're introducing yourself and you're talking about a job or school or something about um, what you look like or where you've been or, you know, even your family heritage, these kinds of things, just know this. Those are important things about you but that's not your primary identity. Your primary identity is you are a child of God. You are God's child. That changes everything. Who you are is grounded in whose you are. So in the next chapter of Matthew, Jesus goes uh, into the wilderness and he is tempted by Satan, tempted to turn away from his true identity as son of God. He will not turn away from that identity. He will not give in to the devil. And I believe that his baptism was a big part of that. His affirmation, his deep knowing that he is the son of God, he is deeply loved by God, helped him face great hardship, sustained him in those difficult times. The blessing of our loving God, the deep knowing that we're loved by God, sustains us no matter what we face in life. Nobody and nothing can take from you that you are a child of God, that you are deeply loved by God. It's our identity. Baptism is about identity. Second baptism is about witness. A lighted candle witnesses to light, right? Light in this world, the presence of light. The candle of baptism witnesses to the presence of Jesus, who is risen, living, walking with us, no matter what. Candle of baptism witnesses to the power of God for life and forgiveness and love and justice in this world through the Holy Trinity. So there's this part of the baptism service that we do at Peace and it's a witness part where we get to say no three times. We say no to evil, to the powers that defy God, to the waves of sin that draw us from God. And then we say yes to God coming to us in the three different ways, right? The three different persons, God, the Holy Trinity. We say, yes, I believe in God, the Father, God, the Son, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit. It's a witness Jesus' baptism is a witness for the first time in public. God is shining through him. And when your parents bring you for baptism, or when you come for baptism yourself, you are witnessing 
that God is at work in you and shining through you. It's a public witness. In, in the church, we don't like having private baptisms. We, we can do that in an emergency, but it's about the public gathering of the people. It's about the church gathering to celebrate this, and it's a public witness. Your life is to let the light of God shine. You are marked with the cross of Christ in baptism. So we walk around with that tattoo, really, on our forehead to say, hey, I'm marked with Christ. That's a witness in the world. Think of that, the song, This Little Light of Mine. Uh, it was an anthem of the civil rights movement. And the message is kind of like this. When each individual shines, standing up alone or with others, Every little bit of light joins with all the other little bits of life, of light, to be part of working for God's justice in this world. That's what that, that song helps us think about. Make a difference for justice in the ways that each of us can, together with others. So when we gather for worship, and, and then we go out into the world, to let the light of light of Jesus shine through us, we're being a witness in a world of fear and violence and racism and injustice, we are being a witness to a God whose power is greater than all of those things. A God who is a God of life for all. There's an example that I, I want to share from this past week. So Friday was the actual day of Epiphany in the church. The day of Epiphany is January 6th. Does that bring up for you anything else in our nation? Now we can't hear January 6th anymore and think Day of Epiphany first. We're thinking about the storming of the U.S. Capitol, the violent storming that happened. And this is the second anniversary this past Friday. And so some faith leaders came together Friday morning outside the Capitol in Washington for a vigil for democracy. And Reverend Jim Wallace of Sojourners Magazine, maybe you've heard that name, he spoke and he prayed, and his message was this. He said, epiphany means to realize something. We realize, he said, that two years ago, we came close to losing our democracy on this day. We realized that a false gospel of violent white Christian nationalism was present on this day. But the true gospel of Christ must be part of the response to this day as well. And that's why we're here, to reclaim Jesus on this day of Epiphany and call Christians to stand up to condemn white Christian nationalism in all its forms as not only wrong, not only dangerous, but also unholy. And then he went and he did an Epiphany blessing at the U.S. Capitol, also called the People's House, right? A blessing praying for God's light, the light of Christ, to be present in and through that, that place, public witness to the true gospel of Jesus in our nation today. Baptism is about identity and witness, and finally, mission. A lighted candle has this gentle power to captivate, to illuminate, to create a sacred space. We use candles in worship to do that. A candle burns, and this is a cool thing to think about if you just want to reflect on a candle sometime, right? It gives itself a way to give light for others, right? Part of its mission is to diminish itself and eventually, I mean, to disappear, right? Uh, to give light to others. So think about this that baptism is about mission. It's a calling to live for others. It's a calling to give our lives for others out of love. That's how we live out our purpose. Candles, I think, get more beautiful as they burn. I think maybe we get beautiful. We're beautiful as we're living out God's mission. So then back in our first reading, Isaiah, again, speaks to the people of Israel words from God, and God is saying that they are a light, not just for themselves, not just for their families or the Jewish people, but to the world. They're meant to be in mission to the whole world. We are too. 
Isaiah tells of this servant anointed by God's spirit to bring justice for all. The servant leader will exercise God's authority not violently, but patiently, gently, faithfully. And the words, did you think about this? The words that Jesus hears at his baptism sound a whole lot like the words that are spoken to that servant leader in Isaiah 42, right? Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. Jesus is a servant leader living out these words of truth from Isaiah in the world then and now. That's the connection, giving himself for others. So as we make the connection to baptism, so we rise from the waters of baptism, right? And, and we're, we're given that pattern of Jesus. We're, our lives are patterned after a, a, the servant leader, Jesus. We are sent out to be servant leaders, to love and serve our neighbor. And when I think servant leader, I think of Pastor Holly Quinn. This Saturday, we're going to be gathering for a memorial service to celebrate his life, mostly to celebrate God in our world and how he was a servant of God. He worked tirelessly to help this church be about the mission of reaching out to our neighbors with the love of Jesus. So in baptism, we find our identity, who we are. We're beloved children of God. We become witnesses to Jesus. We are witnesses of justice and life and forgiveness and love. We're given gifts and we're also given a mission. And that's to share the love of God and Jesus with, with all the world. So here's our commission today, church. Let us be a light on this hilltop, right? Let your light shine. And I think a great way to think about that is to sing this little light of mine. So let's, we're just going to do it a cappella today. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. I don't just come up with this light myself. No, Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine, not just for me, not just for my family, but everywhere. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. We're going to sing a powerful hymn now with some really, really good words. So I encourage you to think about what we're singing together. Burgundy 112. Wash, O oh God, our sons and daughters.
Now, exciting time of the worship service, we're going to install and bless our 2023 church council members. So I'm going to invite uh, these folks to come forward. And as you do, well, could everybody grab that burgundy book again, look at page 35, the small numbers in the bottom of the front part of the book. We're going to hold uh, the Apostles' Creed in front of us uh, to speak together in a moment. Uh, and if you are a council person coming up, please bring your burgundy book. So the president is Pam Asadi. These are the people who are here at this worship service. Several were at the first service. Pam was at the first service. Vice President Joseph Anderson. Treasurer Eric Tao. Secretary Gail Stores. Those are our executive officers. The at-large members, Evangelism and Outreach, Sandra Puckett. Worship is Antonio Yun. Come on up, Antonio. Stewardship, Melody Duke. Youth is Elise McWilson. Education is Michaela Cox. Inreach is Rick Trombley. And Community Resources is Craig Cogger. Okay, so guess what, Antonio? You... <laughs> You get to represent the council. Yeah. Okay. Ex officio members, myself and Deb Martinez as executive director of Peace Community Center, and then Brendan Nelson as director of community outreach and um, uh, um, engagement and outreach also attends the church council. So we're going to speak words in the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to invite us all to stand together and speak these words of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And I know some of our council members are online today. You're not done yet. <laughs> Stay up here, Antonio. Um, so we're, we're right by the baptismal font. And our calling from our baptism, all of us, our shared calling is to love God, love and serve our neighbor, and love and serve God's creation. There are particular ways that you and the church council do this as leaders on the church council. And so St. Paul writes, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. So our council has been elected to positions of leadership and trust in this congregation. And uh, Antonio and, and others uh, online, these are the roles that you're committing to take in this year. You are to govern this congregation and oversee its ministry. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect Jesus in whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and the work of Jesus are done in this congregation, that God's will is done in this community and in the whole world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of serving, that the one Lord who empowers you is glorified. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, to help maintain the life and the harmony of this congregation. And so, on behalf of your siblings in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been elected? Please say yes by the help of God. Yes. By the help of God. By the help of God. <laughs> Great. And then, people of God, will you support... Antonio and the full council, as they, as your elected leaders, uh, share with you the mutual ministry that we have together that Christ has given to all who are baptized. If so, please say yes by the help of God. Yes, yes by the help of God. 
Uh, I now declare you duly installed as the church council for 2023 of Peace Lutheran Church. God's blessing. We say install, and I always make a note on this. It, it sounds like there's a refrigerator that's being put in or something, but it's, this is about marking the beginning of this year in leadership. And it's also about blessing. So I'm going to pray a blessing uh, on you, Antonio, and the whole council. Will you lift your hands a blessing one more time? God, bless Antonio, bless our entire council. Thank you for their gifts. Help them to let the light that you have given them shine in this year to lead and guide to serve as together we live into the vision that you have given us to be a diverse community of faith in the hilltop where all are welcome, a community that is spirit-filled, compassionate, healthy, reconciled, and just. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give thanks to God for what God is doing here today. All right. <laughs> Praise God. And Myra, come on up, and, and she's going to share about the life and the ministry of the church by way of the announcements. Okay, so some of the announcements uh, we have today are, um, so we have give help to those in the winter season. Um, I know that Chris is here on Fridays, so if, um, and we have the, um, you can drop off items to Demish or um, on Fridays. Um, I will hope to be here on Fridays. I just uh, just started my school, so um, if you want to help somebody in need, um, we're just looking for like fleece blankets, ears things to keep people warm, um, whatever you like to donate. Um, just sim simple items. If you were outside, what would you like to keep warm? We have a lot of shampoo and conditioners, such as like earmuffs, socks, um, light hygiene items, chapstick, Neosporin, things like that. Um, if you want to make Bible uh, reading a priority in the new year, we have some suggestions here. If you want to read through um, and get to know more. Um, we also have conversations around race recommends. We have um, the Tacoma Ministerial Alliance with Dr. King's uh, scholarship banquet. The, um, and two others that if you're more than welcome to come to. I um, just want to give that information. Pastor, do you have any announcements? Yes, let me add. Uh to that, Myra. Okay. Um, looking for Mr. Brendan uh, for a director of community engagement and outreach announcement and update. So I'm excited to share. We are just a few weeks out from um, completing our DADU. So thanks to some folks that came out last week to get some painting some interior stuff done, and our next phase is, is to get the exterior painted and some um, uh, landscaping. And I'm working with Craig Cogger with some folks from St. Um, St. Mark's to get our uh, solar panels installed. So we're, we're getting close, folks. We, we're getting there. Um, we are a little bit behind schedule. You know, Washington's weather can throw you off sometimes, um, but we're grateful that we are able to be in this space um, and, and be able to have this opportunity to, to steward the land that, that God has given us. The other piece is, um, as many of you know, I, I do a lot of work just throughout the community and with the city, and oftentimes I get calls around like, hey, do you know somebody that can help with this or do this? And I got a call just a few weeks ago from the City Events and Recognitions Committee. Um, they put together the annual MLK um, uh, celebration and one of the things is we often hear from the adults and, and their perspectives on Dr. King, but this year they really wanted to incorporate a youth voice. And so I um, had the opportunity to take two young people the last week to meet with and be interviewed um, by the city. So uh, Eleanor and Audrey Preston will be highlighted at the 2023 MLK um, celebration. I got roped in at the very last minute for a piece of the interview, but I uh, just wanted to share that, you know, sitting and listening to their, their interview and just their responses to the questions just further validates um, the importance of our young people's voices and how we encourage them and um, uh, to lift them up. And so it's next Monday, it's uh, in person 
Um, this is the first in-person event since COVID, so it's been about three years now. Or you can watch it online. Um, it will be on TV Tacoma. So just really grateful for uh, Andre and Ellie for like taking that, that request um, and really leaning in. Um, and definitely wanted to have more opportunities like that, but this is just another example of how peace is showing up um, in our city. So thank you all. Just keep praying for, for the housing ministry, um, our, our resource ministry. Um, there is such a great need for, for housing, uh, getting food, uh, folks food and clothing. So let's, let's really keep that lifted up. Thank you, Mr. Brendan. And um, wanting you to know now that we're back to the regular rhythm on Sunday mornings, uh, 8.30 and 11 o'clock worship, 11 o'clock worship, live streamed, 9.30 breakfast, 9.45 to 10.45, faith education hour with uh, activity, faith activities, faith offerings for children, for older children, fourth through sixth grade, for confirmation youth, uh, seventh and eighth grade, and then for older youth and adults, uh, all of that is back and in action now. I hope you were able to see the really good article honoring Pastor Holly Plain in the Tacoma News Tribune. If you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. There's even a little video uh, that you can watch too if you're, if you're looking at the um, online version of things. Um, what a blessing. And this coming Saturday, at January, which is January 14th at 11 o'clock, we gather here for the memorial service, celebrating his life, celebrating God at work, uh, and hearing God's words of hope and promise for all of us as we continue life um, in his absence now. Uh, that will be live streamed. So this, it will, there'll be a lot of people there. And I, I just want to tell you some of the details here. Uh, for worship, uh, everyone will need to be masked. Um, the, the worship is in this space, but live streamed, and there will be an overflow area in the multipurpose room where people will be sitting around tables that will also become the reception area after the service. We'll be showing the live stream on the screen there, uh, but of course, people could also live stream from their home, or they could watch this video later on Facebook or on, on YouTube. For Peace Church folks, that's you, uh, a special word, when you come, if you come. Please carpool to get here or park a little further away and walk or, and Joseph Anderson suggests, ride your bike, right, or walk. Um, just try to know, just keep in mind that there'll be folks who are arriving who should get an opportunity to park closer uh, than we who are always around this church building, right? And so please do that. And also please consider... Uh, unless you're uh, part of the service, serving or leading in a way, uh, would you please consider sitting in the overflow area uh, and being part of that whole uh, community gathering together, but uh, being there to allow space in here uh, for uh, certainly the close family and, and friends of the Plain family. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, please keep the Plain family in your prayers in this time. And, and know that we are all part of the legacy of Pastor Plain and, and those who have come before us and those who are present, who were present even in the time uh, when Pastor Plain first arrived at the church. Thanks be to God for our shared ministry. There is no men's breakfast in January. I am uh, informing you that on behalf of Antonio, who is taking the lead on the men's breakfast. Um, also wanted to lift up We've been talking about baptism. Does anybody want to get baptized? Uh, we're not going to do it today, but we can schedule that for the future. Or maybe you know of somebody who wants to get baptized or some kids who it's time for baptism. Let me know. It's exciting. It is good to respond to God's gifts with our offerings of time, talent, and treasure. We're not passing around any ba offering baskets today, but there's the offering box at the welcome table. You can go online to give. You can set it in the... The mail, uh, these are ways that you can share for God's work through Peace Lutheran Church. Um, any other announcements that didn't get made that need to be made? Okay. Myra, keep us going as you collect the prayers. I'm going to come to people to gather your prayers, too. Okay, first and foremost, are any birthdays in January? Raise your hand. Oh, I All see right, somebody. Oh. Happy birthday in Happy advance, birthday. probably. Yep. 
Oh, epiphany had already happened. Good. <laughs> and uh <-huh. laughs> is that it? Yes. Maybe some people online if you raise your hand. Okay. Um, oh. Ziada. Ziada's birthday is tomorrow. Blessings. Vera. Letha is the 20th. Okay, Letha. Yes. So we're going to go into the, um, do you have any, uh, thing you'd like to share of, um, excitement, maybe um, something, a blessing, um, that has happened. Thanksgiving's blessings. Thanksgiving's Anybody so have forth? anything to share? I'll come to you. Okay. I found out last week that the housing I thought was a five-year plan is a permanent plan for me. Praise, Praise God. God. Good. Um, I have a new position as the board secretary for the Central Neighborhood Council. We love to have you. And I'm going to Olympia for... Um, next month uh, for my new job as the liaison for the Washington State Student Engagement Network, which is a part-time job, but um, if you guys know any students that would like to advocate for financial aid and um, Pell Grants, um, or maybe other things, um, please let me know. Um, it's a free event with the overnight stay, so you just have to be enrolled to admit. Thank you. Awesome, Madeline. Yeah. Blessings, <laughs> wonderful. Coming to you, Jessica. I found out that my cosmetology license from California is in good standing, so I specialize in different ethnicities of hair, so I'll be able to continue to do that again. Yeah. Wonderful. Any other stuff? I think there's one online for you. So we're going to go into times of concerns and prayer requests. Let me let me add a Thanksgiving that oh, moves yeah, into a concern. Okay. okay. So um, Thanksgiving at the birth of baby Kennedy to Shaley Perez, who is Ida Perez's daughter. Uh, the baby came uh, premature, so there's the they're they're home from the hospital, but prayers for both mom and and baby in this time. Uh, and then um, I want to lift up some individuals who are grieving and then people who need some healing from God. Um, those who are grieving, the Plain family at the death of Pastor Plain, Michelle Brooks at the death of her sister, uh, Andy Lyons at the death of her brother. Her brother was in his 40s. Um, and also prayers for healing for Ryan Wright's son. Ryan Wright does IT work uh, for the church and the center. Renee Jones. Um, Linda Witten, that's Major's mother, uh, Joe Blake, Yvonne Reed, and lifting up prayers for Debbie Kennedy, who is Brendan's, Brendan's mom. Others? Just prayers for one of my best friends who has to have surgery on Friday. Just pray that it goes well and that there are no complications. Um, I would just like to pray for one of my friends that I went to high school with. Um, she had to have an emergency C-section, and the baby was four months early, um, and she passed away, and she only lived for 30 days, and so she's having a hard time. Continue prayers for Carol Plain, um, not only grieving, but continuing to heal from uh, hip surgery. And also just a, just a reminder of how much Carol was an intimate part of Holly's um, ministry here and that they were a team. And so as we give thanks for his ministry, we're also giving thanks for their ministry. And so I give thanks for that.
also have it and um, forgot. And my son's birthday is this month. We're gonna have a party at the end of the month. So I'm excited. He's gonna be 18. I'm a little kid anymore. So praise God. Um, so let's bow our heads and pray. I'm looking and see if there's any prayer requests. Do you see any that? Okay, well, nope, I don't see any. Okay. Um, let us pray. Um, dear Lord, we bring all of our celebrations and all of our concerns. Um, we are just, um, we just um, want to pray for um, the Plain family. Um, thinking of Pastor Plain at this hard time, especially um, with his funeral service um, this week. Um, Lord, please be with those who have lost, um, those who are going through a hard time financially or spiritually. Lord, please um, bless um, all of our birthday people. God, just be with those that um, need you right now. Um, Lord, please be with those who have, um, there's been a lot of crime going on lately. That Anyway, um, Lord, we just want to give you our praises um, and give you um, our love, and uh, thank you so much. This is our Lord's meal. We remember in the night in which he was, be, he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. All are welcome to share in this meal of Holy Communion today. Uh, please know that the dark cup is the wine, the light cup is the grape juice. We have a gluten-free option for the bread. If you'd like that, just let me know. We also have prepackaged communion here. Uh, let me know that too, that was also at the welcome table. If you are worshiping online today, you can find the bread, wine, or grape juice and receive them with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. <laughs>
Please stand and receive words of blessing as we go today. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May God bless you to be a blessing this week and this year. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll sing verses 1 and 3 of Take the Name of Jesus with you. I have an epiphany blessing for the home that I'll hand you as you leave. If you're online today, we've sent that out in the All Church email as a link. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God.